The How do I look? Fine. That should be your outro. <laughs> well, don't, don't, don't do that because that's a Roman Atwood's thing. Really? Yeah, he does. That's know. everybody's thing. Okay. Uh, well, you just did the. Uh, oh. Where I can do the destiny. Yeah. Give me Neutron. <laughs> what's up, everyone? We're doing another segment of Raw Madness. And uh, this one is going to be a big one. So, you know, pull your earlobes back and get ready because we're about to go at it hard. Anyway, this is about serving your spouse. This is about unconditional love. And what's the other one? Cheating. And cheating. So, what's up? I'm Hi. Ron G. That's my wife, Dawn. And we're about to get into it. So, we got these topics from friends on Facebook. Um... And it was suggested that we do a Valentine's Day video, but we really don't celebrate Valentine's Day. We have been together for 20 years, and we just don't feel the need to celebrate it. We do little things for each other every day, and we always express our love to each other. So we don't need to go out and buy anything special for Valentine's Day to show that we love and appreciate each other. Um, so let's get right to the unconditional love aspect. We were just talking the other day about unconditional love and what it means to love someone unconditionally and it's exactly what it says. You love someone regardless of what they can do for you and how they make you feel. Love is an action and you should strive to love people not because of what they can do for you or how they can enhance your life but just because you have love to give, and they're a human being, and you should love them. I got a question for all you people out there. It doesn't matter if only one person watched this. <clears throat> I don't if if it's just three people that watch this video. I got a question. Pass it around. Shoot it to other places. You know, share it. My question is, do you really have unconditional love for someone, your friends? your parents, hell, even yourself, do you have unconditional love? Think about that. Take a little bit of time. We're not talking about pets, but if you want to add pets. Pets are important, too. All pets matter. Lives as well. They, they do. <laughs> All lives as well. You know what I mean? So we love everybody. We love, we, we do our best to try to share the love. But my question is, do you love unconditional? Think about that word, unconditional. And, you know, put some comments below. I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know. And um, we're also talking about um, serving your spouse. I posted something the other day. That's hard, y'all. I'm telling you. It is hard. It is hard. I posted something the other day, and um, we're in a group called Married Life at our church, Life Church. And one of the um, hosts of the group said that he's always serving his wife. He checks with her on every decision um, about every everything. And I thought Ron and I don't do that with each other. Um, I'm more guilty of it than he is. I'll make plans for us as a family and I'll just commit to something without speaking to him about it first. And um, you know, that's, that's not, that's not right. And that goes into serving as well. You know, when we think of serving, we always think of an, an action, like doing the dishes or something like that. But it, it all comes down to loving someone and serving them. And we have to get better at it. We know that that's something that we're lacking in in our relationship. And um, we acknowledge it, and we're going to work at correcting it. And we realize that if we're both always serving each other, then we both always have our needs met. And when you know your spouse well enough, you know what their needs are. And if you don't, ask. There was a time in our relationship where I came to you and asked, what do you need from me? Remember that? About 10 years ago. What do you need from me? And we both wrote down a list. He has his list hanging on the bedroom wall. And I have mine in my purse. So, and every once in a while, I pull the list out to make sure that I'm still meeting his needs. Yes, our needs change from time to time. But, you know, once you know your spouse well enough, you know the core things that matter to them. And for me, it's acts of service. He 
washes the dishes, he cleans the house, he does laundry. Obviously, I don't like to do much of the, any of those things, but he does those things for me and they make me feel loved and appreciated. And for him, um, I would say it's acts of affirmation. He likes to be um, acknowledged and told that he's doing a good job or that um, he's a good provider and things like that. And I try to do those things for him because I know that's what he, he needs. And, you know, I'm not just doing them because I know that's what he needs. I, I believe him. I believe those things. So it's, it's not a stretch for me to tell him he's a good provider or um, that he takes care of our home well and makes sure that we have the things that we need and all of the things that I want. So, um, you know, serving your spouse and just serving others. It doesn't have to be a spouse. It could be um, your family, friends, coworkers. There's all kinds of acts of service that you can be involved in in your community. It's all an act of unconditional love. And see how those things tie together? I didn't even realize they tied together until just now. And for all you cats out there, well, I like to say cats, but all you females, all you males, I want you to understand we, we're not perfect. We're not saying that we have the per perfect relationship. That's not what we're saying. Just because my wife said we go to church, that's a new thing for me. Well, not really. I used to go to church when I was a little boy, but, you know. It's new. It's, it's a renew. New, it's a renew for me because it's something I didn't want to do, but it's something to better myself, but that's what I'm doing because I have a lot of faults. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of bad, I have a lot of bad things that I want to be done my way, everything that's done in this house, I want it to be done my way. So I have a lot of, I have a, I have a lot of issues with the way other people do things because I just want it done my way. So I don't want y'all to think, oh, they're perfect. No, it ain't nothing perfect about us at all. And I don't, and also I want to touch on, I do a lot in the house, but I don't do everything. This is for you men out there. You have to do some things to get things. You can't just always come home, sit down, expect to be in your hand, and expect your woman to do everything. You have to get things done for you to get things that you want from your wife, and she has no problem doing that. And there's a difference between her giving it to you with no problem, and she's just doing it just to keep you quiet. It's a difference. So you have to think about that. Now, if you don't care, I, but if you're trying to keep that relationship growing, you're trying to keep that relationship loving, you have to do things to make them happy. So when you ask or want things, it's no problem. They do it in an instant, it's not a big deal. Same thing with vice versa. It's the same thing, like me putting up the drapes or me putting up whatever she needs or looking at her car or whatever, a little, ch a little chore or picking up something from the store on the way. You know, most people may think, ah, oh, you're doing too much. Ah, oh, you're a sucker. Call me what you want. I love my wife. I want to keep it as is. I want to keep it very happy. I want to be able to get what I want, when I want, whenever I want, whatever it is, without, oh, I don't want to do this, or blah, blah, blah. I want us to keep us happy and always, always have laughter in our house. And the last thing we're going to talk about is cheating. Now, you know, lots of people have different types of opinions on cheating, and what cheating boils down to, for me, in my opinion, is selfishness. You can't love somebody unconditionally, you can't always serve your partner, and then cheat on them. Because cheating is a lack of respect, it's a lack of respect for your relationship, for yourself, and for your partner. And if you have family involved, it's a lack of respect for your whole family unit. And some people like to say, oh, if she gave me what I wanted all the time, then this wouldn't have happened. Or if he treated me better or paid more attention to me, this wouldn't happen. But maybe if we had more open communication in relationships and you quiet the outside noise like Facebook and Twitter and your coworkers in your ear and unmarried couples or unhappily married couples telling you, all this stuff on the side here, then you wouldn't find yourself in situations where you, you're weakened to cheat. Because 
when you cheat, you're not a, necessarily a bad person. You could be a good person who made a bad decision. And you have to keep tabs on your relationship. Check in with your partner. Are we happy? What do we need to correct? What's going on with you? What do we need to talk about? So that you keep your relationship strong and you don't let an outside influence get in there and, and mess you up because it can mess you up. So, you know, you have to start thinking about those things. People say, oh, I want to get married or even I want to get divorced. But what are you doing to, if you are married, to keep that connection so that you don't have the cheating or, um, and cheating could be physical or emotional. It could be inappropriate text messages, um, inappropriate phone calls, inappropriate pictures. All of that to me is cheating. So, you know, somebody could think, oh, looking at pictures of a naked person on the internet isn't cheating. Well, depending on who you are, it's cheating. To me, if Ron's looking at pictures of naked women or a woman sends him a picture on Facebook in his inbox, to me that's, that's inappropriate and that's cheating. Um, a magazine, okay. You know, that's not, obviously, I don't, I don't think that's cheating. Or... Porn. I don't think that's cheating, but don't watch porn. <laughs> we do not watch porn anymore. Again, we're not perfect. We don't do that anymore. Um, but I don't know um, why she said that. Well, anymore? Because we're gonna be real. Well, yeah, we real. This is raw madness, and, right? And some people know raw madness about the porn, and people know who the hell I be. <laughs> so we ain't gonna figure it over here, right? So. Um, but if, if it's somebody that we know or have an, are an acquaintance of and they're sending either of us inappropriate material, then to me, they have no respect for our relationship. And, um, if we entertain that, then we wouldn't have any respect for our relationship. So, you know, you, you, you can't really live in a bubble and keep things from happening. You know, people trying to infiltrate your circle. But you have to, you know, block them off. And that's where prayer comes in, always checking in with each other, good communication, and a good family unit. Because, you know, if Ron is out with my brothers and one of them happens to be single, you know, that could be, you know, a time where Ron feels like, man, he's talking to all these girls and I'm just sitting here watching him talk to all these girls. But, you know, if you have a good um, family influence, then... You know, my brother would respect. You know that he's trying to. And she's faithful. just, she's just saying, and not, 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 in, not for real. My not. brothers wouldn't do that. But you know, you have to be around people who respect your relationship, and be careful of the outside influences. That's really all I'm trying to say. That's, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that's a little long-winded, but that's what I was trying she was, to get. At. She was preaching with y'all. Yeah. I'm telling you, preach. Yeah. Preacher with Dawn, watch out for that. Be quick, all right? Um, I can't speak for every man. I can't speak for a woman. All I can do is speak for myself. And all I'm going to say is coming to the cheating part is basically eyes. You know what I mean? Um, you can see someone that you're attracted to, but I don't, it's, it's nothing you can do when you're attracted to someone, but when you go and do more than being attracted to that person. But I know for me, all I can say is what could cause a problem in your marriage from my perspective is someone you see and they're attractive and they have what you like, whether it's face, eyes, teeth, boobs, their butt, thighs, whatever it is. Whatever your relationship is lacking or whatever your wife is lacking, whatever you think your wife is lacking because you've been with her too long or too less or she's not fulfilling what you want her to fulfill, you have to realize it all comes to loving yourself more. If you love yourself more, and it may sound like a cliche, but if you love yourself more, you can love others more. You have to love yourself. I didn't learn this until now. I'm Every blah blah blah. <laughs> Unconditional love came for me when the time my when times when my wife had surgeries and I had to dress her, I had to clean her, 
I had to put shoes on her. I had to put socks on her. I had to put clothes on her from bottom to top. Then that's when I knew I loved my wife unconditionally because I'd never done that before. I had to get my wife out the bed. I had to fill her dead weight. I had to take her upstairs. I'm not saying that I'm a perfect man. It's not about I, I, I. Eventually that I became in T-E-A-M. We became a team. And the more I grow, Can I get a high five for that? The better I, <laughs> the better I get. You know, everything that is negative, I still have, I still have a lot of negativity. But all I'm saying is choose the right instead of the wrong. Choose the positive instead of the negativity.